Do you have anything else that you want to? Well, I think I want one of these studios for myself. Isn't it cool? Yeah. Come and use this anytime you want okay. to. It's really a great idea. It's like really smart. Just to, so that like whenever you go to work, you could just go to the same place. I, I wanted, I had this idea. I started to do it in 1993 or four. Um, the idea of, uh, you know, owning your own content in your own studio with your own venue to show it on. And then like, I was like, everybody was like the internet, the internet. And, uh, you know, I thought the internet was going to be a lot like television. And mm -hmm. um, so that's why I did all this. But uh, it isn't a lot like television at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, for instance, you have to do it all for free. Yeah. And uh, it's okay, though, because I, I came to terms with it like, well, you know, I had the money and I put it here. And I still have this like really scary feeling sometime that, you know, all our freedoms and uh, you know speech and everything will be taken away from us. I mean, I have that huge fear, and so mm -hmm. I like, keep it for like, well, I'll have like some open channel for artists and people who really oh, want to say things in case we lose it. But of course, you know, they'll just come and close it down. But I mean, do you worry about that kind of stuff? Um, I don't really worry about it. I don't really worry about it. I guess no. I mean, your book, you know, I've chosen to stay and fight. Yeah. I mean. I was like, I thought that was pretty cool that you had, cho first of all, that you had chosen to stay in yeah. fight because I want to just get the F out of here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I know. I know. Well, it's, but it, it's like, I think that, yeah, it, it would be great to just leave. But then it, that then everybody else is still here, you know, and having to struggle and, and suffer. So if you have the ability to somehow um, alleviate their suffering, you should, you should stay. You have a responsibility because you're so talented to help people you know, with your perspective. And well, you said that to me in the airport, was it in Vancouver? And I have ne I never forgot it and think about it a lot. And uh, that's why I thought, well, I guess that is true, even yeah. though I don't want it to be. Do you think that this whole country is like it's some serious, do you think it's seriously in trouble or do you think it's better? I think it's, I think, I hope it gets better. I mean, I hope things get better. I think things will be a little better. I think people are excited now that we can get rid of George Bush and mm -hmm. start over. The thing is, the problematic thing is that they might go to McCain, which is really scary. That's what that's what like terrifies me. Or, I'm scared or that, if yeah. they start, you know, nuking Iran before the before the election, so Bush can have martial law. That scares that's me. That's really scary too. But I I don't I don't think that's going to happen. I feel like a lot of faith with people that that, that things things are changing and that they'll get better. I'm more optimistic about things now than I have been in the last several years. So that's what I'm really sensing from you too. That you are a lot more optimistic in, in a yeah. lot of ways. Is that because of is that because of body image and and, and that? I think so. And I think it's also because um, um, I think it's also because of other, the, my upbringing. Because my parents, it's like my parents are super. It's like at least you don't have to eat bark off of trees. Like they're right. super like my parents, grew, you know, grew up during the Korean War and like they're so used to starvation and all this like shit. So they're like, oh, this is nothing. Right. You know, it's like when they sort of round you up and put you in a camp, when they change your last name, then call me. Like it's like then they're totally yeah. like, you know, oh, this is nothing. Are you are you first or second generation American? I'm first Amer generation wow. American. See, that, that's really, that's odd. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm third generation American for, you know, Jewish Americans. Mm -hmm. that, that's pretty, you know, most of them are second of my, of my age group. But yeah, I think that has a lot to do with, uh, you know, your generational outlook. Um, it, it, it has a, a lot to do with a lot of, a yeah. lot of things. So I'm still a little bit optimistic about things. And, and but you more. used to didn't be so optimistic. No, more, I was much more um, cautious about things. Like, you know, it's much more, well, like, uh, you know, in like 2003, 2004, like I had a really tough time because I was really cr criticizing Bush a lot. And, yeah. and I got a lot of death threats and hate mail. And it's pretty insane, you know, from the right wing. Like people really are crazy out there. You Aren't get they? scared. You get scared because it's like, yeah. can't believe the, the anger that people have. And if, you know, like if there's so much, that's like the first thing they go with me, it's my racism, it's racism, right. sex, sexism, whatever, and homophobic, anything, or they, first, they just go for the fact that they think I'm fat or ugly or whatever. And so people are just so awful, like online, it's crazy. So I was really pessimistic in the early part of the century, but now I, I, I think that things are getting better. 
That's pretty fantastic that you like have that you think they're getting better. I think they're, you know, I'm just the opposite. I wonder, I'm like, you know, with my eating disorder thing, I'm like, well, of course she thinks they're better. She's lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is like, I gained, so F it. Oh. No, but I mean, I, it, in a way, that's true. But uh, it, it just seems uh, to me like a scarier, scarier than ever place, America. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I sang the Star Spangled Banner and that talked about death threats. I had to have yeah. armed guards on top of my house and are surrounding my kids for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, you know, it's just like, I it, remember, it would be I, hard for, it's hard for me to be positive. I know, I remembered that. And I remembered that I thought it was so funny. Thanks. What you did was hilarious. Because the thing about that song is it's very hard to sing. So, you know, even somebody like Whitney Houston, it's like, has a hard time singing. It's a very, very hard song to sing. So if you're a comic, you would make fun of it. Like that would just be like the natural thing. Like if you know Steve Carell or somebody uh -huh. went out and did the same thing, people would be laughing. If it well, was... he's not quite as stupid as me. No, to but you have were really accepted. funny and cute, and it was a really funny thing. And grab your crotch, and it was like a funny. You were doing it like a baseball player. It was hilarious. But I, I thought it was funny, you know. But it's like so devastating to uh, have you know things canceled and business deals and. You know, it's and sometimes I still ridiculous. I still can't get a job a lot of times because it goes to the higher highest level, and they're like, we don't like her. She's anti-American. I mean, it goes. That's not true, though. It's like crazy. No, but it is on the highest levels. Yeah. of people who greenlight things. Yeah. It, you know, it's like kind of a blacklisting thing that I feel that I've gone through because of it. But it's which very is so, sexist if you think it about it. If you think about it, if you look back, okay, if if, if it had been like. You know, what's would it be a good male comedian? Like, like you know, if it had been any other, like a, any other guy, if it was Tim Allen, like Borat. Yeah, they would have like yeah, loved it. They did. Yeah, I was pretty. De I was like, wow, look at that. It's different. I, I do think it has to do with sexism. But, it is. It's um, all sexism. But this country is like a really scary place. Um, a scary place for, uh, you know, women of color. Yeah, really and, scary. Uh, yeah, it's hard. It is hard. I, it's, I like look at it. I look at things like you know, just the just the way that they're, they're treating Michelle Obama and stuff, and it's like, yeah. it's really hard. Yeah, I'm like waiting for the avalanche of crap that's going to come down over that woman. And I feel you know maybe maybe people won't let him do it. I, I, I maybe hope so. maybe maybe I'm they'll so. have some control over it's it. It's really because it, it just looks like it's. It does look like it's going to well, come like down for, heavy. For Bill O'Reilly to casually talk about lynching party, you know, did you use the word lynching party? Yeah. It's like so crazy. It's like, what? I, and nobody really said anything about it. It was like so insane. I don't know. But it is a hard place for women of color, but very hard for women. And hard for women in comedy. Right. I mean, I think women in comedy, it's, it's, it's rough. Isn't it right there when you get up there to tell your jokes? I mean, it's so right in your face, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, even even uh, even a mixed audience of gay women or whatever, it's still there. Mm -hmm. It's still there that you just feel like, or I always do, or sense it like just that judgment against, uh, just a judgment, kind of a taint for for women who have something to say mm -hmm. in this country. But I guess in other countries too, because I'm like always going, are are they going to put us in the veil now? <laughs> I'm always like waiting for that. Yeah, you know, because I mean. Realistically, worldwide, that is happening to women all over the world. Right. I mean, more and more women are they're doing, you know, re reviving witch burnings and all this crazy shit that they can't get enough of, like, you know. Yeah, or honor killings. Right. You know, like when they're like fathers killing their daughters. Yeah. And stuff. And so, so for women like me, me and you, and you know, the the few of us, maybe thirty, really, in yeah. the world, who get up and say what we really think. Mm -hmm. and what we really feel and what we really want to say in, in this country as, as free people and thinkers, I mean, you know, it, it definitely is a, a privilege and, and we definitely owe it like you told me in Vancouver and helped me a lot with that. Good. Like I went, yeah, she's right, damn it. Yeah, because you, you owe it to your fans and to people who need your comedy, need your sense of humor to get through it to get through it, to survive it. They need you. So it's so important that you do what you do. Well, I'm like totally impressed by you and I'm going to watch your show. I'm totally impressed of everything you've always done. I've always been impressed and a admired you because I, I think you're very brave and very cool. But the nude thing, oh my God, I like, I'm like, you're going to be a goddess to me now. <laughs> it's, like, it's just, I can't believe that you. 
have those kind of guts, but you do, and I'm oh. glad you do. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. It's nice talking to you. Nice to talk to you, too.